What's going on guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my review plus on feet video of the brand new Adidas X 17.3 in the launch Dust Storm Pack colorway. So this is the X 17.3, the more budget oriented takedown model in the new X 17 line. So above it you have the point two, which retails for $130. These guys retail for a mere $75. So they've actually dropped in price in comparison to the X16.3 uh, by $5, which is an interesting choice, but for the most part, it's a very similar shoe to the previous generation. And in my opinion, we'll go over this in the video, of course, not the greatest quality shoe overall at this particular price point. Anyways, if you wanna learn more, stick around, watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes. Where you'll be able to pick these guys up below their normal $75 retail price. So. 75 bucks, is this a good buy? Obviously with the takedown model, the cost of the shoe is very important because you're buying the shoe because you're on a budget. So at 75 to $80, I don't think these are fantastic. If you're asking me to recommend a thin synthetic, lighter style of shoe at $80, I really think the Nike Hypervenom Felon is an excellent option. If you guys have not seen my review on that particular shoe, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen. You can go ahead and check it out. Because again, I, I really don't think that anything comes all that close to that particular shoe at this price point. If you want something with a th synthetic upper that has that kind of thinner, lightweight feel on your feet. Anyways, with the X17.3, it's listed as a tech fit upper. You can see the branding right there and the tech specs with Adidas, especially on this X line, are extremely unclear. You're gonna find that X17.3, 17.2, 17.1, and 17 plus pure speed all have tech fit upper listed in the tech specs. But if you're familiar with all four of those shoes I just mentioned, all the uppers are pretty much different. So what does tech fit upper actually means? What does it actually mean? It doesn't really mean all that much. It's something you kind of have to define for yourself, which I'm gonna do my best to do for you in this video. So the upper on this shoe, pretty much the same as the X16.3 in that it's a cheaper synthetic material that you would kind of expect at this particular price point from Adidas. Uh, it's relatively thin. It's got a little bit of a plasticky sensation to it. It's nothing spectacular in regards to touch. It's not overly soft on your feet. And it doesn't really offer that much of a premium sensation, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys. Does it get a pass? Does it offer a decent touch on the ball? Yeah, sure it does. But it's certainly nothing that is worth spending $75 for right away because it's that good. It's just nothing special best way to describe it. And the finish on the surface is pretty much completely smooth. It doesn't have nonstop grip. It doesn't have anything quirky to the material at all. It's just a straight up kind of lower end synthetic. Now, obviously you're gonna notice this does not have a one piece design like you'll find on the models above it, be it the X17.1 or X17.2. Instead, what you have is the same design carried over from the X16.3. So you have this stretchy neoprene material that runs through the collar area of the shoe at the heel. And then it extends up, so it has kind of the same look as the higher end model, but it just fills in the gap. You can see the synthetic is completely separate from this material itself. And basically, this is just a strip of material that runs to fill in the middle portion of the upper. It doesn't actually wrap around the sides or anything like that. It's basically just acting as a tongue, which I think looks really cheap. It's, it's just one of those shoes that I know a lot of people bought the X16.3, and I'm sure as many people are gonna buy the X17.3 as well. But for me, I just don't care for the look of this shoe. It looks cheap, it looks low end to me, especially with these really chunky laces they put here. They're not even flat laces, it's almost like a rope style lace that is just so bulky and unnecessary for a shoe. I'm not sure why they put these on there, but that is the construction of this particular boot. I guess in a nutshell, you're gonna find it's a low cut model. Some people consider this to be mid cut. I think they're crazy. You have the S curve heel, um, which is a characteristic you'll find across the entire X generation, which is interesting. Not super noticeable when you're wearing them, but comfortable enough, I would say. Although I do have some issues with the fit in the heel. We'll get into that in a second. You have a very nice heel liner, actually. It's a synthetic suede material. Decent amount of padding back there. Uh, so that's good. Uh, you also have an insole that is not removable, which is kind of expected from Adidas at this particular price point. We never see the 70 to $80 price range 
ever have a removable insole. And in fact, on the X17.2 at $140, the insole doesn't come out either, which kind of interesting. But again, this is expected at this price point from Adidas. So not really a huge deal in my opinion. And then moving on to the sole plate and stud pattern, obviously it's not going to be a sprint frame like you'll find on the two top end models, the 0.1 and the plus. So because it's not a sprint frame, you have an internal heel counter versus a built-in heel counter attached to the sole plate. You're also going to find that the material for the sole plate is a cheaper plastic, which actually feels more like the sprint frame versus the X17.2, which feels much thicker and much more rigid. It just, this feels better to me as a sole plate. It's much more flexible and just feels more natural on your feet, especially out of the box. And then of course you get the X generation stud pattern, the X17 and X16 carryover stud pattern. Same layout you'll find across the entire Adidas brand. It is also FGAG. So you only wanna buy one pair of shoes to play on both firm natural grass and artificial grass. These will get that done for you. And the overall performance is about what you would expect from this stud pattern. If you've worn an Adidas shoe in the last several years, you kind of have an idea of what to expect in regards to overall traction. Now, in terms of weight, in a size 9 US, these guys weigh in at 8.7 ounces, which is obviously going to be more than the two top end models by about an ounce and a half or so. So they do weigh a little bit more. It's not a super, super lightweight shoe, but they are lighter than the X17.2, which is kind of interesting. Again, I think that has a lot to do with the sole play just being unnecessarily thick on the X17.2, but 8.7 ounces, they're not heavy. They're not super, super light. It's kind of an average weight for a shoe that I would say is fairly average and kind of expected at this particular price point. In terms of looks, again, I think this is a cheap looking shoe. That's just me. I think if you compare this to the look of the X17.2, the model above it, still a takedown, of course. Those just look so much more premium. They look like high-end shoes. These don't look good. You look at the new Nemesis 17.3, I think that looks pretty premium. This is a shoe that just looks cheap to me. I mean, let me know your opinions down below in the comment section. But for me, I'm not a big fan of the look on this particular boot. Anyways, that is enough about tech specs though. Let's take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet because the fit is interesting to say the least. So you can see here on the right boot, I actually swapped out these really thick rope laces for some replacement SR4U laces, which are the white and black grid pattern. So if you guys are interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description of this video. So if you're interested in a pair, be sure to go ahead and check that out. So you'll immediately notice that when I put these on, it makes my foot look extremely wide and that is not because my foot is extremely wide. You guys see me try on shoes in pretty much all of my videos. The reason why it looks like this is because the fit is extremely shallow. For whatever reason, it makes the sides of the shoe extremely low and the volume is just really uh, shrunken down in comparison to the models above it through the entire foot, including the heel, which is kind of the main area of concern. But that's why it ends up looking like my feet are extremely wide. They're not actually that wide. It's just the way that the shoe is cut with the materials. And I'm not sure why Adidas takedown models always have some kind of an awkwardness to the fit. There's no reason that the takedown models should fit worse intentionally in comparison to the high-end ones, but that's a decision that Adidas seems to make pretty frequently with their takedown models, which I'll never understand. And it's something that seems like it would be easy enough to correct, but they haven't corrected it. They just leave it like this for now. So I guess you kind of have to live with it if you're buying an Adidas takedown. Anyways, let me just tie these up really quickly. These laces are so bad. I don't understand why they put these really chunky laces on here. Anyways, tie that up. And here is a look at the shoes on feet. So once you actually get them on, the fit's not terrible. Um, they fit relatively close to your foot. Um, uh, it's a little bit tighter than I think you would expect it to be for this price point. Uh, and again, it just has to do with the volume of the shoe. It's a very low volume fit, which does create less space on the inside of the shoe. But there's also, it also feels like there's not enough depth. And especially in the heel area, your heel just feels like it's sitting too high out of the back of the shoe. Not to the point where it's necessarily slipping, but there's pressure on parts of your heel that you wouldn't necessarily expect to have. 
And again, it's just an awkwardness that doesn't need to be there. And something that I just really don't like about this shoe in general. Will it be uncomfortable for you? That's obviously something that's gonna differ from person to person. For me, I don't find these to be particularly comfortable at all. And as far as the rest of the material is concerned, I guess the upper, it does feel cheaper. It's gonna soften up as you wear them in, of course. But for the most part, this is not a shoe that you're gonna put on and be super impressed with in terms of overall quality and comfort out of the box. As far as width is concerned, it's got a fairly snug fit. They're not narrow, but because of the way the shoe is cut, if you really have wide feet, they're probably not gonna fit you all that well, so keep that in mind. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size 9 US here, and the fit and length is pretty much perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. So that is pretty much it guys for my review of the Adidas X 17.3 in the launch dust storm pack colorway. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can click the little eye in the corner of the screen or the first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links with exclusive SR4U coupon codes where you'll be able to pick these up below their normal $75 retail price. If you have any questions regarding this shoe, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support the video with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.